Hello and welcome friends. Welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pens from my collection. Today I have for you another beautiful Mont Blanc from the 1950s. It is my latest acquisition. I present to you the Mont Blanc 252. This fountain pen it's not in its best shape but the most damage is concentrated in its um, cap. You can see that the trims are uh, affected. Uh, I can't say they are in worse shape, but they are a little bit affected. And of course, the logo on the top of this fountain pen is affected in the sense that uh, we have this plastic Interesting that this isn't casein because the casein uh, develops this patina in time. So this is not from the early 1950s. It's a later production because it has here the plastic logo that doesn't de develop that uh, patina in time. And uh, you can see that... Um, it was broken once in its lifetime. And somebody added this ring, this silver ring to it. It is fitted quite, quite well on the cap, but it isn't original. So the re original looks like um, this model. This is a 254, a model a little bit bigger than the 252. And I'm showing it to you to see that this was surrounded by the dome celluloid black that you see on this model. I will leave this aside. This is the cap. So this is the only element that it is wrong with this pen. The other stuff are great. So we have a beautiful, beautiful Mont Blanc 14 carat 585. This leaf like a leaf nib. Quite interesting. We have... Uh, Ebonite feed and um, another affected part on this model is uh, this uh, trim, this uh, ring that uh, it uh, was uh, gold and now it was gold plated and now it uh, faded away. The piston works just fine and if I turn it around you will see the end of the piston through the ink window you can see it yes okay so it works just fine i uh, bought this fountain pen recently and um, i think i paid for it around um, 50 euros so quite, quite, uh, maybe 55 or 60, including the shipment. I didn't know about this problem, but I think I did okay. I recently discovered in my collection that I had the 254. So the 254, let me show you. It is a little bit bigger than the 252. And it's also a piston filler. It has the same mechanism piston filling mechanism but you can um, see it has a bigger gold nib the same type of nib the Mont Blanc 14 carat I call this in the shape of a leaf from the trees it has even the same feed, but of course a bigger ebonite feed, but the same model of feed. And it is wonderful. So when I bought this 254, it came with this original box. But the original box is from a 252 Extra Fine. And what do you think I bought? But this was a coincidence, guys. So I bought... A 252 extra fine. Unfortunately, I don't have extra fine written on this part, the turning knob. But I think that this is an extra fine nib, judging by its ending. The tines are quite, quite small. So I think this is an extra fine or a fine nib. Of course, this original box 
it came with the original instructions. Let me show them to you. Why not? So, we have Mont Blanc. Let me zoom out for you to see. Mont Blanc. And those are the instructions for the ballpoint pen, which was quite new at that period of time. They were trying to promote this new writing instrument. And on the other side, I think we have, yes, we have the instructions for the fountain pen. Quite, quite nice. And there are a line of ink fillers, ink bottles. Okay. I will put the Mont Blanc here, the Mont Blanc box here. And just for a comparison, I have here also the Meisterstück 146. So let me see this. I'm trying to see. Yes, this is the small one. So this is the 252. And this is the 254, a little bit bigger. And guys, I will just um, show them to you side by side, and I hope you can see them. So this is our 252, the smaller one. This is 254, and this is the Meisterstück 146. So I will show them to you side by side. You can see that the smaller one is the 252, then the 254, and then the Meisters took 146. I've uh, searched on the Fountain Pen Network and I've uh, I received an interesting information. So in a price catalog from 1955, the larger 149, which um, is um, a little bit larger than a 146, it costs 90 Deutschmark. And the one, uh, 146 Meisterstück, it cost 54 Deutschmark. So this 54, the 254 cost 28.5 Deutschmark. And our 252 in 1955, it cost 24 Deutsch Mark. So 54, 28.5 and 24 Deutsch Mark. And uh, if you're wondering, so the biggest 149, the Diplomat, cost nearly 100 Deutsch Mark. So it was 90 Deutsch Mark. So quite a big difference between 149 and 146. Those were similar priced. And uh, so this was the class one, 146, and those are class two. And this was the high, um, this was like um, flagship of the Mont Blanc from the 1950s. And those were considered second class fountain pens. And uh, also in the 1950s, there were also the class that started with three. And they were intended for uh, students or um, young schoolboys or girls. And uh, they were quite, quite uh, expensive, even in class 3. So they uh, were around 20 Deutschmarks. And you see, those are 20 and something Deutschmarks. I will leave this aside. I will leave also the 254 aside and now uh, we will concentrate about our fountain pen. So I started with the flaws of this fountain pen, but uh, the nib is in perfect shape as you can see. So I have no problems with the nib and believe me 50 or 60 euros for this uh, pen. I think it is a steal. And um, I will show you why, because I will do next the writing sample. Why not? Before I will do the writing sample, uh, just as a comparison, I will leave the dimension of the three fountain pens. 
So you will make an idea what is the main difference between them. Of course, let me show you the main difference between them uh, because um, when I'm talking about the price, of course, I'm talking about the quality of the nib, um, the filling system, and we will talk about this in a few minutes. So indeed, we have a, a, a world-class nib and those nibs. I must tell you that I like the shape of those nibs, but the difference were, um, of course, this is a screwing cap. This has the piece, uh, the telescopic uh, filling uh, system, and um, this is the real difference between them. So almost two times the price of the other ones. So if you bought two of these, it was the equivalent of the, uh, the 146. Okay, guys. So remember, I will leave the dimensions. And we will start with the 146. Okay. Then we will um, continue with the 254. And last, we will uh, see on the screen the dimension of this beauty, the 252. Okay. Next will be the writing sample, and I've chosen for the writing sample the Pelican 4001 Königsbrau or Royal Blue. I've recently acquired also a vintage one from the 1940s or, or the 1950s. You know that I don't use uh, vintage ink, so we will use instead this uh, new, new Pelican 4001. Königsblau. Let me take those aside. First of all, I will fill it up and then we will change the um, camera, the angle of the camera, because I want to show you how this uh, beauty writes. Okay, Königsblau. Now, I will turn the turning knob. Okay. Now you'll see, yes, the ending. I will put this like this. Uh, well, I don't have a tissue. <laughs> I'm always bad prepared when I'm filming these videos. And I will certainly need a tissue. So first of all, you gently take it out and uh, remove the excess of the ink. Remember, the ink is fairly expensive, so it is uh, good to make some economies. Now, I gently use it on the body, and why not? Let's use it on the nib. I will put this aside. Remember, guys, oh, I'm sorry, I have to, now I've noticed in this lighting. So, I'm telling you, collectors out there. You can see here a little bump in the celluloid and it is uh, not so visible on the other side. But I think that this bump was made because it was held in um, an elastic. Let me tell you what I mean. So guys, and I recently discovered this. Look at some of my celluloid fountain pens. They are right above my desk. And you can see that they are held by some elastics. So, this isn't a good, good thing. And I will tell you why. So, in time, that elastic, it puts pressure on the celluloid. And the celluloid, you can see, it's quite, quite, um, now you can see in this lighting, it's quite, quite a fragile material. So if you deposit them, 
uh, don't do it like I do with uh, those fountain pens. Just try to put them in a special um, a drawer like this. So no elastic, no pressure on uh, the celluloid material. And I don't know if the casein with um, the milk um, origin has the same problems as the celluloid. But uh, better stay safe than sorry. So guys, I'm sorry. Now we will return to the writing sample. So I will just put the cap on the ink bottle. And now I will try to change the angle of the camera. And I hope I will. Okay. Yes, I think this is a good fit. Okay, guys, this pen pose, you know, I don't pose my fountain pens. It is quite, quite nice to hold in the hand. Let me see if I need a little zoom, maybe. Okay, it is good. So this is a Mont Blanc 252. It is made in Germany, made in Germany. Because it has this type of a feed, I believe it was made around 1955. Okay, it is fitted with a 14 carat 585 beautiful gold nib. And judging by the way it writes, I think it is an extra fine nib. Okay, let me see if it has some line variation. No, no flex to it. In general, the Mont Blancs from the 1950s have a little bit of flex, but in this case, no, no line variation. Indeed, we are talking about an extra fine nib. Let me see how juicy it is. So not such a juicy nib. Let me see if I can reverse write with it reverse writing yes it was not designed for reverse writing and uh, it scratches a little bit but the flow of ink is uh, good so you can reverse write it with it if you choose to i'm sorry guys the sunlight has uh, <laughs> joined us okay what can I say? Let me see if I can do a little signature with it. Whoa, the, yes, it's quite nice. It writes um, good. No scratches unless you do the reverse writing with it. Now, a little bit of uh, feedback. Now, let me tell you about the quick brown fox that sorry <laughs> sorry about that jumps jumps over the lazy dog so now guys you can see how it writes you know that i'm not a big fan of extra fine nibs and I must tell you, sometimes being an extra fine nib, I sense that it lacks the ink flow and I have to put pressure on it. Just look at this with a little bit of pressure and there's no pressure. This is the only flow of this fountain pen. I like, I love, in fact, the nib. Guys, this was my review and the writing sample of this beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. I hope you've... Uh enjoyed this episode with a classic beautiful Mont Blanc from the 1950s. I uh, love, I simply love the Mont Blancs from the 1950s and you can see that my collection is uh, growing 
little by little it's growing and uh, I simply love them. I hope you love this uh, review and I want to wish you to have a nice day wherever you are. I want to thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed this review of this beautiful classic Mont Blanc, please subscribe to my channel to support my YouTube activity. It doesn't want to stay. Okay, so I will uh, just close it. So, uh, guys, again, thank you for your time. We will see you again at the next review. Till uh, then, take care of yourselves, and we will see you again. Bye-bye.